Hi everyone, welcome to your mini monthly. This is for the fire signs. So fire signs, thank you for joining me. This is B, and welcome to Psychic Sounds by B. We are here today to go over your September and October mini monthly. I will be breaking these down into the elements at the end to let you know what your advice is from spirit, from God creator. And we're gonna get right into it. Thank you so much for all the likes, the shares, and the subscribes, I certainly do appreciate it. For those of you that would like to get a membership with me, donate to my channel, get merchandise, any of those things, please go to the link below. Okay, we're gonna shuffle a few more times and we're gonna get right into the month of September. It is September 1st. Happy birthday to all of my beautiful Virgos out there. The month of Virgo. Details, details, details. Being of service, looking after one's health. Okay. All right, fire signs. Let's go ahead and pray over the deck. All right, Aries, Leo, and Sag. First card, second card, third card. All right. What's going on with you in the month of September? Let me move that just a tad. There we go. First card is the King of Wands. So it looks like you, Aries, Leo, or Sag, are looking back into the past regarding a situation possibly, okay, I just heard someone had a chance to transform something or be part of a transformation. Uh, but maybe that opportunity was lost. I don't know. Um, it's just coming through that way. Uh, but there is something going on here where someone had to make a decision. So that decision had to be made. And then that decision, like I have been telling people up to this point, that there are a lot of, you know, things going on with Saturn, okay? Saturn going retrograde, Saturn going direct, all this activity with these retrograde, direct, retrograde, direct. These decisions are significant, okay? So someone is looking back at a time where they made a decision, they're like, I shouldn't have made that decision, okay? I should have done this particular decision. I should have handled it this way. And so either you're the person that's saying that, my beautiful fire sign, or someone that you know is saying that, the, you're having a conversation with somebody where they're saying, I made the wrong decision. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done that. I should have done something different. Okay, so that's just what I'm getting as a download, all right? But the King of Wands is all about change, all about transformation. And again, like I said, he's looking back to the past. And maybe what we can do is since this is him looking back to the past, I will clarify this. I don't normally clarify, but for some reason, a lot of these clarifier uh, energies have been coming up for certain elements. So I, I clarified a lot for water. So I will go ahead and clarify this for you. But we'll find out what he is so interested in. This is a fire sign, Aries, Sag, or Leo. Masculine energy. Looking back to the past regarding a project, a th um, some sort of a, a thought that turned into a manifested, materialized movement. Okay? And that's what this King of Wands is looking at. So let's move on to the next card. The hanged man. Interesting fire sign. Now, when we look back into the past and we've got this energy behind us, that means generally we're either turning our back on this energy or we're bringing it with us in order to understand whatever this past situation may be. And like I said, I'll clarify that. So now you've got the hangman. Well, this is a Pisces person. Okay, it doesn't have to be, it's feminine or masculine. It really, it doesn't matter. It Since it is a, a man on here, it could be a masculine energy. But it's a Pisces nonetheless. This is about sacrifice, martyrdom, um, the unconscious, the subconscious, the awakening, the... Um, the awareness of the decision. Okay, and it might have something to do with a Pisces person. So this might have something to do with 
whoa, okay, I just, <laughs> okay, I just got a song. And I'm trying to think of who it's by. I think it's a, 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 a woman and a man duo. I'm never going to let you go. I'm going to hold you in my arms forever. I'm going to try to make up for the times that I've hurt you so. So something's coming up here like, but I don't, I don't feel like this person is with you. I feel like someone wants another chance. This is weird, all right, Sages, because I got this for you as a download um, not that long ago. Okay, so be that as it may. Let's continue on. This is someone also that is tethered to a situation. They can't quite get out of it. They want to be able to get out of it. They want to be able to remove themselves from this Pisces person, from this from this awakening, from this unconscious, subconscious way of being, an addiction maybe, or a passive aggressive nature, but they can't. So someone needs someone here. Someone needs, and I really think it's a, I think it's a Pisces person, but it could be another Aries, Lee, or Sag, but um, someone's not willing to let somebody go, okay? Now, what's interesting is, and I've never seen this before, but this looks like the four upside down, and the four is all about stability. But from a godlike perspective, the four is about carrying the burden to the end. I think someone decided, whether it be this Pisces or this fire sign, decided, I'm no longer going to be part of this burden. So somebody had to go. I'm no longer going to be part of this lack of stability. I need stability in my life. I need, I need continuity. I need reciprocation. I need a foundation in my life. Why am I carrying a burden that's not mine to carry? And why is someone so willing to share their burdens with me? This is what this feels like to me. So fire signs, you might have gone through that energy or you're going to be going through that energy, but there's some energy around you that definitely feels like that. And a Pisces is a big part of this. Or Pisces characteristics, the past, the hidden, the unconscious, the subconscious, hospitals, research. Passive aggressiveness, martyrdom, sacrifice, unconditional love, clandestine affairs, whatever this is. This is a 12, so this is the house of Pisces. But that also breaks down to the three, which is the house of Gemini. Contracts, agreements, negotiations, short distance travel, siblings. The neighborhood, the truth versus the lie. Something might be coming up here, fire sign. You might want to ignore this Pisces, but... You can't because it's faded that you can't. This is interesting. What I'm getting here is just is really fascinating. It's almost like you want this person to go away, but they're never going to go away until you finally learn the lesson. Does it have to be a Pisces? Not necessarily. And maybe there's another sign over here. We'll see what other characteristics are being expressed. Okay, guys, hold on just a second. I got to go get my dog. I'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. Um, so what I feel is going on here, you know, this could be Gemini energy, this could be Pisces energy, this could be um, the energy of the characteristics of the 12th house and the third house. Uh, this could be the 12th month, which is December. So something might be happening in the month of December. Um, somebody, okay, I'm just hearing somebody might be biting the hand that feeds them. Okay. That could be. Could also be the month of March. So something might be happening in the month of March or someone might, something, someone, someone might be happening. So what I'm sensing here is that someone might be revealing something or they might be pushing something forward or they might be, it is, it kind of feels a little bit like coming out of the closet. Okay. And I don't take that um, as just LGBTQ. There's so many different ways to come out of the closet, but you know, if you've hidden yourself in any way, shape, or form, there's something about needing to come out and show your true sovereign self, okay? So either you're doing that fire sign or this Pisces is doing that, okay? Let me see if he has anything to say. I'll get back to this King of Wands later. I accept. I realize now my role in the situation. Oh, geez. Okay. Karma has been delivered. So what I feel here is that there is a contract that was in place for certain individuals and that contract is now fulfilled, whatever that is. And so either something needs to happen is in a new chapter in that book needs to move on with that, with that particular person in your life, or that book is going to be closed completely and they will be gone, but they will always affect you or vice versa. All right, fire sign. Again, remember that song that I, I had mentioned, I'm never going to let you go, okay? It's like someone is tethered or someone is corded to you or you're still corded to someone else. What is the third card? Look at that. Ta-da! Hello, Sagas. There you are. Sag and a Pisces. This could be a Sag Capricorn Cusper as well. And I don't know why I got Sag Capricorn Cusper, but I can certainly see what comes up as we pull up more cards. So this had something to do. Now remember, this is in this fire sign's memory. Or this is what the fire sign brings with them. In the back of their mind. Did they dip the toe in the water? Did they test out the water? Did they try something out that maybe they shouldn't have because that landed them in a more suspended type of a position? Is there something going on here regarding mixed drinks, perhaps? Bartending, having a good time, having a glass of wine with a Pisces person, with a Sagittarius person. What's going on, fire sign? Needing to find the balance in a situation as well. Maybe this Pisces person brought somebody balance. I can't help but look at this hangman having this wonderful enlightenment, but also this temperance having an enlightenment, an enlightened moment, an awakening. So this Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo has something in their mind about 
enjoying time with a Pisces or feeling like they want to be with a Pisces or talk with a Pisces or something having to do with Pisces characteristics or patience or time. You know, sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, some people, when they, when they fall in love with somebody, they will just wait through a process of attrition until that person's available again. Like somebody here might be saying, you know, I'm going to call every month or I'm going to call every two months to see if they're available yet. That could be for some of you. I'm just picking it up. Let me see what she has to say here. Oh, that was interesting. I just heard come and get me. So some of you are dealing with someone who's going to hold something over your head. Or maybe you're holding something over somebody else's head. Someone wants you to beg or vice versa. You want somebody you want somebody to beg for you. It's kind of like that song, Ain't Too Proud to Beg. <laughs> Sweet darling. <laughs> Ain't too proud to speak. Okay. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, that song has something to do with beg, but I really feel like there are these two individuals and this one is saying, I'm going to make them beg. And this one is saying, I'm going to make them beg. It's really, really fascinating and interesting. You know, someone maybe after they tried something for a, for a long time is what I'm hearing. Like they were trying to find the balance for a long time. They were trying to mix and match things. They were trying to figure things out for a very long time. And then they decided, I'm done with this. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm just shuffling one part of my issues into another part of my life and another part of my life and this part of my life. Or, or I'm just making excuses for the situation. It's time for me to go. So they put their two cups down and then they walk down this new path. Because when I was holding her, she basically said to me, I can only do this for so long. I can only, I can only mix and match and try to balance this out for so long. It's time for me. It might be time for me to go pretty soon where I'm going to have to walk down another path that's, that's lit up. I mean, if you think about it, look how lit up this, this is a yellow with all that bright light. And look at this one, very similar. Somebody got illuminated about something. Or maybe the truth came out in a situation. Usually when I see, you know, an emancipation, an illumination, or um, an awakening, or some, some sort of energy like this, that really truly could be the, the experience of true sovereign truth. But this could be healing. This could be, I just heard transparency. Um, that's interesting. I've never gotten transparency from temperance, but I guess there's a first time for everything. And it's interesting, fire signs, you might hear people telling you, well, there's a first time for everything, or you might, you might be saying that to someone. For some of you, you're trying to find a way to get more blooms out of your flowers. <laughs> Oh, it's like they're not blooming like they were last year or, you know, how do I get more blooms out of my flowers or more fruit out of my, my harvest in some way, shape or form. But I believe this fire sign has this in the back of their mind. Did they dip their toe in the water with a Pisces? Did they? Were they trying to find the balance with the Pisces? Was the Pisces trying to find the balance with them? Did they want to travel with them? Did they want to spend time with them? What is it? Okay, or was this in tow? Was this a burden? Was this a tethering that somebody wanted to get rid of? Maybe they don't want to be with a Pisces. Maybe a Pisces was, was driving them nuts. 
and maybe the Pisces won't let the fire sign go. But they wanted to leave. They wanted to go back to something from their past. Or, or someone did here. This is a 14 that breaks down to a 5. The 5 energy from a spiritual perspective is all about conflict, defense, uh, competition, challenge. Um, sometimes destruction, to be honest with you. Great change, transformation. And, you know, we have change and transformation here. But from a godlike perspective, the five energy is all about God's grace. So this truly could have been about someone who is gracing someone else's life and now someone's finally realizing it. And now they're having these memories about this person that was so important in their life, but maybe they turned their back on them for whatever reason. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Interesting September. I feel like there's a lot of uh, nostalgia in the month of September for some reason. Uh, maybe you bump into these people again. I don't know. But there is some sort of memory coming through here. This could also be where someone is demanding something of someone else. Someone is about to realize someone's value and someone's worth in a way that awakens them to a completely different type of understanding. You know, it's kind of like, let's just say this as an example. It's kind of like the mean girls that talk about, you know, that strange girl or that quiet girl, like behind her back. Okay, then all of a sudden that quiet girl and that strange girl ends up being the CEO or the president of the company. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, please be careful um, who you are um, throwing under the bus or I hope people are careful if they're trying to throw you under the bus because there's some sort of energy here that I'm getting as a download where someone is trying to, or someone has in the past, really made somebody's life miserable and made them tethered to a situation and they were the sacrificial lamb. And the thing is now is, who's crying now? You, you see how that, that kind of that ricochet thing is happening here. It's like a boomerang effect. I really do feel karma has something to do with this. So let's just see, sorry. Fire signs, I took a way too long on the September reading. I hope you're okay with that. But let's keep going here. All right, what do we got? Okay. Go ahead and pray over the deck for the month of October, please. Okay, October, first card, second card, third card. What's going on in October? My beautiful fire signs. First card is, here it is, karma. What did I tell you? Boomerang coming back at you, um, something backfires. I'm sure many of you get how I read now. I, when I do my predictions, I get my feelings on these. And you know, we, sometimes we get people on here that are like, that is not what the card means and da, 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 da. Well, here you go. I literally just talked about karma and here is the card right now. So... I was basically picking up what this energy was was transpiring into. There's a boomerang effect. There's a karmic contract that must be fulfilled. Something backfires. Big time. This is a 20. It breaks down to a 2. This may have something to do with someone's self-value. The money they make from the company they work for, the money they make from the business they own, um, the body politic, real estate for some out there as well. 
um, stubbornness. Remember what I said about someone is wanting somebody else to beg or wanting somebody else to kneel before them. Like who, who, who was that? Was that Zod? I, I can't remember who that was in, in Superman when they tried to steal his power, but he fooled them. And he went into the chamber and he used Lex Luthor because he knew Lex Luthor so well that he knew Lex Luthor was going to, um, I mean, was a snake in the grass. He knew that he was going to out him. So Lex Luthor was already prepared. So Lex Luthor outer, outed him and fell right in, everybody fell right into the trap. Superman goes in the, into the chamber. He gets his powers back and everybody outside of him went back to mere mortal, you know? So Superman may have something to do with this or, or Lex Luthor for that matter. But um, yeah, that's what this feels like to me. And that too, from a godlike perspective, is that one-on-one -on -one dialogue. It is that one-on-one, -on -one, when you're looking at someone right in their face, and you're seeing everything, everything. Have you ever had a moment when you know you've been betrayed, or someone knows that you, they, you've betrayed them, and they look in your eyes and they can read it like a book? but maybe somebody's turning their eyes away from the situation. The two from a spiritual perspective is really about contracts and dependencies and, um, you know, cohabitation, um, codependence. So there could definitely be some energy going on regarding that. The two is also February, so that could be an Aquarius or a Pisces. And there's the Pisces right there. What is the next card, fire sign? The Ten of Wands. So it looks to me like someone wants to remove the burden. They're no longer going to carry the burden of everybody else's. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. So, so here's this person saying, I'll do it. I'll carry the burden. I'll do all the work. They're dumping it now. They're saying, I'm not. Now, this could also be somebody who makes it look really, really easy. Even though it's like a lot of work, they make it look like they don't do anything. But they actually do a lot of work. Make sense? Dropping the burden. Not wanting to go all the way. Maybe somebody didn't want to go all the way with a Pisces. Maybe somebody didn't want to go all the way, whether it's work or romance. Somebody wasn't willing to share that burden. Someone wasn't willing to give someone a chance. They kept them stuck. They kept them tethered. No advancement. No advancement in a relationship, no advancement at work, nothing. And they kept giving them a bunch of responsibilities to do because they're the loyal one. They're the one that just knows how to handle things. But they're also the one that was the scapegoat. If you give a scapegoat a lot of work and they have to take it, what happens when they can't finish it because of the sheer volume of it all? They're a great target for fodder. Not anymore. Okay. So that could be you, fire sign. That could be somebody else as well. Or this Pisces that we've been talking about. This is a 10. Absolutely. Status and career. Commitments, loyalties, hierarchies, banks, governments, all this is here. Depression, suicides. Now, granted, this could be fire sign, hangman. That goes without saying. When you've got a 10 reversed and you've got uh, the hangman here, um, 
that's the Capricorn energy of a suicide. So someone may be saying, I can't take it anymore, and they, they hang themselves. And I don't want to put that energy on anybody, but if I don't tell you, then I get the karma, and I don't want this crap happening to me. So this could be a Capricorn person, but this is also the 10th month, which is October, so it could be a Libra or a Scorpio as well. Okay, that might be getting hanged or something like that. The 10 from the perspective of a godlike perspective is the gathering of souls. The gathering of souls. So there might be, you know, um, a bad apple. There might be, you know, like the one bad apple spoils the, the whole, you know, barrel, basically. But what if there's more bad apples than good apples? See, that's it. I'm kind of feeling like I'm feeling like a mean girl vibe here. But, you know, it could be a little, you know, it could be something else. But I am feeling like this dichotomy of the good versus the evil. I do feel that. And I don't know why. But it is coming up that way. What's the last card? Unbelievable. Give me a moment. What do I call the three cups reversed? Mean girls. This is mean girls. But you know what, what else this is? They lose. This boomerang is boomeranging back on the mean girls that don't do crap, that don't do anything. All they do is complain. All they do is tell everybody else this person's not doing anything. This person isn't doing enough work. This person isn't getting their job done. Whatever, whatever, whatever. But it turns out they were the ones that weren't getting anything done. They were very demanding. They didn't, they didn't appreciate what they had. So now someone is going to reduce their load. And they are going to be absolutely 100% upside down. This is also um, a get-together that's delayed, a get-together that is not going to work, um, needing to reschedule as well. This is socialites that do a lot of bad things on the side, just to be honest with you. This could be three women that are corroborating with one another to do something bad to someone else. But it's backfiring. Oh boy. Someone's going to get a big wake up call. So we talked about this three before, which is the house of Gemini, contracts, agreements, negotiation, short distance travel, siblings, the truth versus the lie, the neighborhood. Uh, the three is also the third month of March, which is Pisces as well as Aries. Okay. Maybe I got the Capricorn Sagittarius Cusper because of the 10 here, because 10 is Capricorn. That might be where that Capricorn energies is coming from. That three energy from a godlike perspective is all about the, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So it's the Holy Trinity. It's the Trinity of something. But at the beginning of October, something backfires. And the reason it backfires is because somebody is about ready to drop this big burden, this big load. And now people don't know what to do. It's all backfiring. They're unhappy. They don't know how to handle it, they're complaining, they're crying, they're, um, they're lying, they're deceiving, they're mean girls. That's what they are. Interesting reading. Oh my gosh. Wow, fire sign. Fire sign, I've got to clarify this king of wands quick. Let's find out what's going on with this king of wands. What is he looking back at in the past? What is he looking back at? Ooh, 
what is this fire sign looking back into the past about in September and possibly in October as well? Baggage. Yep. Who was the baggage fire sign? Was it a Pisces? Was it a Sagittarius? Was it a Gemini? Was it a Capricorn? Is the reason why someone couldn't be with someone else because of prior baggage, a divorce, an ex? Now baggage could very simply be travel baggage as in bags, you know, suitcases, so on and so forth. That could be. But that's what this fire sign is looking back at, is baggage. And because this fire sign couldn't get rid of this old baggage, there was a boomerang effect with karma, possibly. Wow, fire sign. Let's get into the beautiful Aries. Aries, I'm going to pull two cards for you for September and October. Let's see what your advice is. Using my Gypsy Love Oracle deck. I think I'm going to label this something backfires. I, I really, I really am. Oh boy. Your two cards just came out. Okay, here we go. First card for September is Mars. Well, Aries, you're definitely showing up here. Uh, this is your uh, ruler. I would definitely find out where Mars is in September. Uh, and find out what house it is in for you. And um, that's where your aggression, your passion, your warrior-like energy is going to be. Okay? There might be a competition going on here, like a mean girl competition for some of you. It could be mean boys too. Just I'm just telling you. Um, I would watch out for sharp objects as well. Uh, Mars always brings in sharp objects and burns, so please be aware of that. All right, Aries? And then in the month of October, you have walking away. So, Aries, you're going to walk away from somebody or somebody's going to walk away from you and they won't even look back. And the reason why this is happening, and this might be where that begging back and forth goes, because... Karma is about to boomerang. Okay. So your advice is to walk away. In the situation in October, just walk away. That's your advice. So you could be walking away from a relationship. You could be walking away from an argument. You could be walking away from a situation that no longer serves you. You could be walking away from an ideology that you've had for quite some time. Okay. See what's going on with the beautiful Leos. Leos, what's going on with you for September and October? Leos? September, October. September, Leos, get the facts. Get the facts, Leos. Very important. That's really good advice. Get the facts on this entire situation, especially this one in September. Somebody sticking their toe in the water, somebody mixing and matching things, somebody wanting somebody to hang or to be sacrificed or to be tethered to a situation. And someone that's ignoring what is inevitable. Or dragging this baggage along with them. So get the facts, Leos. What is October? Engagement. So October, Leos, you might be getting engaged to someone. Or you might be talking about getting engaged into, with, with someone. You might be engaging somebody in a conversation. Leo, possibly regarding a karmic backfire, okay? Like karma being 
a boomerang effect happening here because of being mean or because of being cruel or um, giving somebody a hard time and somebody wanting to say, okay, I'm out. So there's going to be some sort of an engagement regarding that in a conversation, Leo. Like you're going to have to engage somebody in a serious conversation about this. It's not a joke, whatever this is, okay? This could be a speaking engagement as well, Leos. Let's go ahead and get into the Sages. Sages, what do we got for you? You're definitely showing up in this reading, Sages. What do we got? Sages, what do we got? Go ahead and pray with the deck. September, October. What is your advice for September, Sages? Secrets. What type of secret are you holding, Sagittarius? What type of secrets is someone holding over you? Someone knows something. They're being quiet about it now. And maybe this is you, Sag. Being quiet about it now. But something's getting ready to backfire. Was someone used as a scapegoat in order for someone to not carry their burden? You know, sometimes people blame others who had nothing to do with anything in order to get out of a burden, an emotional burden. Did you do that, Sad, or did somebody do that to you? What secret do you hold? Do you have proof? Do they have proof? Your advice is secrets. Maybe you have to keep a secret for someone, Sag. That could be. What is October? Cycles. So, Sag, you might be getting on your bicycle. You might be, you know, bicycling a lot. You might be part of a cycle club. This could be a motorcycle as well. Uh, anything with uh, two wheels, basically. Um, cycles are also menstrual cycles. So there might be something going on, Sag, with your menstrual cycle or an effect on your menstrual cycle. Um, this could be the cycles of life as well. Um, there might be some people around you that are, again, going through this, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have. I just, I shouldn't have. Okay. So Sag, that might be, somebody has regrets here. They don't want to face it, whatever it is. But it's getting ready to backfire. When things happen in our life, um, we have to address it straight on. We have to carry that burden. We can't hand our burden off to someone else and make them the scapegoat. Because it makes you feel better or it makes someone else feel better. I feel better if I blame my best friend for breaking up my marriage. I didn't have anything to do with it. It was my best friend. Sure. You see where I'm going with that? So um, just be aware that this is going to have to be settled. This is going to have to be addressed. This is going to have to be released. This is going to have to be... Um, accepted in your in your soul or something's going to backfire like you either have to take the blame for something that was fully on you or you have to make an apology or you have to set the record straight or you're going to have to beg okay now i kind of feel this is you but this may be somebody else around you okay so just be aware of that. All right, we are going to leave it there. I wish all of you the best. Much light, much love, and many blessings. Namaste.